Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the wit, warmth, and wisdom of Mr. John Abercrombie. As we all talk, you'll probably hear us all say a lot of uh, similar things about how we play, how, how we approach improvising, and how we play together. Um, because I think that's, we all feel kind of similar about that. We, uh, I know I feel like I'm part of a group. I'm not up, just up here by myself, because if I wanted to be by myself, I could be at home, you know, practicing and working on all kinds of things, and maybe I could have a mirror set up. You know, I could be watching myself in the mirror. I could have some cutouts, you know, some cutout dolls around, you know, different, different heroes. You know, maybe I could have, I don't know, I could have a Chick Corea doll over here, a Herbie Hancock doll. <coughs> I could just play and, you know, do that. But I like to make music with people, so uh, that's why I do this. And when you, when you make music like this, a lot of it is just being part of, of something greater, like Peter said, the sum being greater than its, uh, than its parts. And what I also like about this is it makes the, the job part of music easier. Because I'm a, I don't know if it's because I'm lazy or in partic particularly, but it's just that uh, I, like to, I like to work a little bit and get a lot of results. Yeah. That's because I'm lazy, right? I don't know. But you know, it's sort of like if I just play a little bit and it's, it's part of what John and Peter and Bob are playing, it's just adding a part to what they're doing. So we really are just, I mean, I could almost say that John is playing the guitar, or Peter is helping me play the guitar, or Bob is helping me play the guitar by, by their musical input. What, they're, what they do gives me ideas, that, you know, musical ideas. When I hear them play, I have to accompany them, or I have to solo with them. I have to listen to the way their rhythm shifts, the way their pitches. I have to get a blend. That's another thing, is a blend, you know, in, in, the, in the band. Like, it's not just, I just don't work on getting a guitar tone, you know, and then come and try to put that in the band. It's very important that it blends well with the bass and with the drums. And we were doing some gigs recently. You know, we've just come off of a five, five gig tour. And I didn't have all of my own little gear with me. I mean, which isn't much. It's just really a couple of little pedals. And I was subjected to using a lot of in-store stuff, which I wasn't used to. And it was strange. I was having this, one night. I had a real strange experience because some of these uh, these boxes you can buy to plug in and make you sound like your your favorite stars. That's actually what they do. I didn't realize that. I was plugging into them and I'm playing and I'm saying, you know, I, just, I know it's my hands. I know it's my brain. I know it's my. I know I'm sitting here. I know these are the cats, but this doesn't sound like me. Because all of a sudden I didn't felt that my felt that my sound wasn't blending with the other musicians, and that made it very difficult for me to play. I played, but it was kind of like a couple of nights I was sort of playing a little bit by rote because I couldn't feel it. And that's the part about music that you can't really, it's hard to teach, you know, it's the, it's the thing you sort of learn by, by doing it. And that's why we do it is because it feels good, you know, and we want it, we can express something by doing this. Um, and also in this particular band, we get to play a lot of different kind of music, like that last tune of John's is really a gorgeous song that allows for a certain kind of expression that say my little swing tune doesn't, or, the, or, or Peter's Cats and Kittens, do, you know, they allow for different kinds of expression. You know, this is a very kind of uh, lyrical, open sort of piece. And um, I think that's what's the challenge of this band is to, uh, is to play all this different kind of music, yet somehow it all works together. It doesn't feel like we're, we're up here doing a show. You know, it doesn't feel like now it's time for I Got Rhythm and now it's time for, you know, now it's time for the pretty song, and now it's time for the funky song. I mean, we just, it's just all part of what we do. So we don't really separate them into, into categories as much as just, hey, this is just part of what it is. Maybe this is the time period we, we, we come from a little more, you know, when things were blended together a little more. Um, and also playing a lot of this music, I, I, I have to f learn new ways to play. Like the first tune, Bob's tune, is a fast I Got Rhythm Change tune, for those of you that that know about that kind of stuff, and, and that's always been one of my nemesises. And uh, so every night I, I get to try and play fast, I got rhythm changes, and it's, it's hard, but I like the challenge. And uh, as for example, on John's, the second tune we played, which is a little sort of funky tune of John's, I was trying to interpret some of the chord progressions by, by when I read them, and when I played what I thought he wanted, and it didn't sound quite interesting to me, so I went back and found other ways to, to make some different chords from the symbols he wrote, you know, to try to make the music sound a little more special and not just read 
some stock thing. So that's what I like about this. It gives me a chance to play with, with cats who really play great, uh, really support and, and challenge me to, uh, to play different kinds of music other that I would normally never play. There you go.
I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, I guess, the things that I think are important for uh, bass players to be thinking about. It's what I'm shooting for anyway. Um, this is a, a wonderful and unique kind of uh, group to play in because you're not only dealing with foundational issues of the bass, you're, uh, you're definitely responsible for a great part of the rhythm, as everyone is in the group, but especially the drums and the bass are going to set the tone of a lot of things. And in fact, the choices you make are going to influence what everybody's playing. And uh, if you leave enough space, if you listen carefully and select directions that are beneficial for the whole group, you can be the type of bass player that hopefully lots of people will want to play with. Um, so you have to be part drummer, part harmonic and melodic, uh, inventor. I think in short you have to think like a composer and arranger to play bass in this music which is wide open like on the last tune uh, when this for instance the uh, solo structures that we were playing over are largely open so whatever you play is going to influence what the soloist does and vice versa. Um, also my ears are very in tune with what Peter's doing and if we launch into another kind of rhythm or something, I'm going to try to be there and try to set something up and we'll fall into different things and try to lay a carpet for the soloist to, to ride on. Um, that's that kind of music. You know, you might be playing in a situation where you're playing for a singer and you have a, a very strict song form to adhere to with a verse and a chorus and two verses and a bridge. Then you have to think like you're laying down the foundation but you're also serving the melody and the singer's line you can't step on the uh, singer's phrases with your fills. You have to stay underneath and sort of support and make things happen in a different way. Um, there are so many different kinds of music, and each kind of music presents you as a bassist with a challenge. It's a great responsibility on one hand, and it's a great challenge, and it's a lot of fun. You, you can really change the music in any group you play with just by choosing a certain note or a certain rhythmic figure. You can throw the music into a whole new direction. So in that respect, I think playing the bass puts you sort of in the center of the musics that you deal with, whatever it is that you like to play. And uh, that's what's exciting about it. In terms of getting a sound on your instrument, this is a tricky thing sometimes when I have students come in. A lot of times when we play the electric instrument, 
guys come in, they plug in, they turn up, and they just go. And they don't really think necessarily about the instrument as an acoustic instrument first, which I believe it is. I would encourage you to try practicing without an amp, too, and getting a sound and getting in touch with your instrument without the aid of any kind of amplification so that you're forced to create sound and draw sound of the instrument with just your fingers and develop a contact with the instrument that's more organic and not reliant on um, what you're plugging into. And that's just my idea, but it's an idea that's been around hundreds of years with the acoustic instrument, and I think it's worth checking into. Um, your sound is your whole communication with the group. If you have great ideas, but your sound is kind of strange and not clear, it gets in the way of your emotional input into the band. What you're trying to communicate can get blocked by a muddy sound or a sound that's unsure, a sound that's a little tentative, and, and maybe sometimes, if you're not careful, maybe stepping on somebody else's idea by trying to go for something that you thought that might have been kind of interesting, but maybe just went straight on top of somebody else's idea. You kind of have to keep your antenna up all the time. So those are the, some, of the, uh, some of the things that I think are important. I guess one of the overriding principles in all this is, is uh, the, idea, the issue of time and uh, connection with your instrument. Somebody with good time is able to communicate their ideas in a straightforward way that everybody can, else in the band can relate to. This is a big one because you can have all kinds of interesting melodies and harmonies and have all the hip parts, but if you don't lay